Well, there it is. Uh, Real Madrid come to Stamford Bridge and just school us. They absolutely schooled us. I don't know what's wrong with the team at the moment. Um, I know all of this, you know, ownership situation and the position the club is in. I don't know, has that ended up catching up to the players? Mentally, is something going on? I don't know, because these last two games haven't been ourselves. To concede seven goals in two games, you know, <sighs> something's wrong in it. And um, look, congratulations, Real Madrid. Um, let's just get into the video. Uh, hey, guys, and welcome back to the JTO channel. And this is your match review of Chelsea 1, Real Madrid 3. Just got schooled, man. We just got schooled. Um, you know, when I saw the lineup, and when I saw Real Madrid's lineup, let's talk about Real Madrid's lineup first because theirs came out so early. Like, I think theirs came out like a good, like a good two hours, like before the game starts. Like a good two hours. They they brought their their lineup so so early. So I saw it and I thought to myself, okay, this is a. You know what? I'm happy they put this out, but at the same time, at the same time, I was always thinking to myself, it depends on what shape these guys have. On and off the ball, especially on the ball. And then I looked at our lineup tonight. And I was happy with the back three. I was happy with the keeper. I was happy with the wing backs, even. I was happy with the front three, except for Mason. And I was happy with the midfield, except for Jorginho. There is a reason I wanted Kovacic to play this game. Yeah? There is a reason, right? And you know, even if Kovacic just started, just from a tactical perspective, nothing would have even changed in that first half. Because the key in that first half was their midfield just overloaded ours, bro. They just had those extra two players, Valverde and Modric tonight. Those two players, maybe Valverde, I would say. I know Benzema scored a hat-trick. But for me, Valverde and Modric were the two best players on the field for Real Madrid. In fact, everyone for Real Madrid was absolutely fantastic. The reason why we beat them so convincingly last year is because we gave them no time on the ball. Yeah? On top of that, we controlled the game. We dominated the game as well. Both games, possession-wise, energy, intensity, press. Today, none of that was there because Real Madrid just had the ball time after time after time again. We didn't want to press them. There wasn't any fight. There wasn't any heart. There wasn't any desire. None of it from the team today. Um, you just look at Vinicius Jr. And you've clearly seen that Carlo Ancelotti has taken his game to a new level. And he he's just, you know, even gone up to a new level as well. What a game he had tonight. Like... That left-hand side, bruv, most of the time, Rhys James, mate, didn't see him for most of the game because, you know, he was targeting Christensen, Vinicius Jr. And the amount of times he got in behind him, oh my God, it was criminal. It was actually criminal. The amount of times Vinicius Jr. had fun tonight. Bro, he just used his pace, bro, every time. Getting behind, getting behind, getting behind. And he should have probably, you know, scored. Um, he had a chance where he hit the crossbar. And I just think tactically the way Real Madrid just, you know, were building up out from the back, giving the ball to Alaba and, and Militao. And then for me, the key thing is you've got Pulisic pressing, you've got Havertz pressing, you've got Mason pressing. My problem was I thought Mace was in the team for tactical reasons to help the midfield out. Mason didn't do that at all today. So I don't understand what Tuchel's trying to do with Mace or what Mace was doing on the field today. I don't understand that. Yeah, because if you've got those three pressing and then you've got Kante pressing, Jorginho's exposed all of a sudden. And even Jorginho's trying to press high up. And even Jorginho today on the ball is awful today. And then all of a sudden, I clocked this even before they scored. Why is Modric getting so much time on the ball? Why is it when he receives the ball, there's so much space for him? Why is it that when he receives the ball, nobody's marking him? Everyone's focused on Cruz, who has all the time in the world. Casemiro has all the time in the world. Valverde on the right-hand side has all the time in the world. They build up from that side. They drift in. Vinicius Jr. runs in behind. That's what they do. Benzema dropping deep, causing problems for the defence. Where do, who does Thiago Silva mark all of a sudden? Now, let's take a look at that first goal. It was a really nice goal from Real Madrid, by the way. Like, they were building out from the back, right? 
They were moving it. Chelsea were pressing. Yeah? They give the ball to Vinicius Jr. Vinicius Jr. just plays a quick one-two. He comes in. Christensen gets dragged. He gives it to Benzema. Off he goes. He's gone. He's gone. And then what I expected in that moment from Vinicius Jr. was to cut it back just across. Just a straight um, ball into the box. But in fact, he was smart. He had vision. And again, this shows his improvement in his game has gone up a level this season. Not just about goals and assists, but also his intelligence. His football brain came into play as well. When he put that ball in for Benzema, it was behind Benzema, bro. Yeah, he managed to see Benzema and crossed it with his left foot, bro. And what a header. I mean, what a header. That is a world-class header, that. That's a world-class header. Absolutely, like, fantastic from from Benzema. And then the second goal. I mean, I think, again, it was a build-up from the right-hand side. Valverde and Modric have the ball. One of them cross it in. Benzema, in between two defenders, heads the ball. The accuracy, the pace of it, the aim. Absolutely fantastic. I mean, can we just say about Benzema, by the way? That man wants a Ballon d'Or this year. The way that guy is going, he's going to win the Ballon d'Or. Not Salah. Not Salah. Not, not, that, not that guy. Benzema. Showing why he is also the best striker in the world right now, bro. F fuck that. Even probably the best player in the world, bro. That guy carries Real Madrid time after time after time after time again. The amount of situations he's got them out of. It showed in the PSG game, he got a hat-trick. Imagine getting back-to-back -back hat tricks in a Champions League. In the Champions League. But then again, this is Real Madrid. It's the history of the Real Madrid. When it comes to this competition, they just, they just find this energy in them. Last year, it wasn't for them. Maybe just tactically as well, Ancelotti's just a better manager than Zidane. I mean, that's another thing people probably haven't taken into consideration. Tactically, Ancelotti... It's just a better manager than Zidane. <laughs> That's just another thing. And Ancelotti would have looked at last year. He would have looked at the problems that and the mistakes that Zidane made. And he would have looked at the mistakes the players made. He fixed it in today's game. And they were absolutely brilliant. Fantastic Real Madrid were tonight. We were pathetic. There was not probably one player on the field tonight that was, would I say, did their job tonight. Not one person, bro. Not one person. Except maybe... Kai tried his best. He got the goal, gave us hope in it. In which Jorginho on the ball, you know, he's got space. He puts the cross in. Jorginho, I mean, Kai Havertz scores. Other than that, Jorginho was pathetic today. This guy on the ball, fam. I'll go deeper into it in play range. But this guy was slowing our play down. He wasn't quick enough on the ball. Um, he was giving hospital passes as um, at times as well. He was getting exposed on the counter-attack as well because he ain't got the pace for it. And what did we need in that game? We needed speed. We needed a pace. And I couldn't believe he stayed on. And I couldn't believe Kante came off. I know Kante didn't play well either. But, yeah. Uh, just pathetic, really. And then, like I said, Kaivers gets the goal. Gives us a bit of hope. Um, we do decent for the last five minutes of the half. Real Madrid, you know, there were two goals up. They sat back. And when they sat back, that's when we looked half decent. But when they got on the ball, we looked scared. We didn't look up for it. That's why they were so good tonight. And I just don't understand how this team decided to give Cruz all the time in the world on the ball. Casemiro, Modric, Valverde. Why are you giving these players time on the ball? You let him, you're just letting Benzema drop deep into space. And then Vinicius Jr. is just twisting up Christensen, bro. Oh, my God. That's a taste of what's going to happen in La Liga next season. Because Christensen's off to Barcelona. Bloody hell, man. Fuck. And then, yeah, uh, second half comes. And what is Mendy doing? What is he doing? He... The ball goes out to him. And he plays a hospital pass to Rudiger. In which that is just too short for him. Knowing Benzema's there. Free goal. One of the easiest goals Benzema will score in his career. And then that probably just killed the tie, you know. That mistake from Mendy just killed the tie for today. So, that's probably it. I mean, luckily away goals isn't, you know, a factor in this. Because if away goals was 
in this year's Champions League would be out the tie 110%, like, guaranteed, to the point where, like, bro, I will literally, like, like, I'll become homeless for a week if, you, do you know what I'm saying? If um we had come back from that, if away goals was a thing, if away goals was still a thing, I'd be surprised if we still turned it around. But there's no away goals. So, to be honest, you know, if we can get two at the Bernabeu, Without conceding, which at the moment is looking very, very unlikely because we've conceded seven in our last two games. Unless we can score two without a reply from them, we've got hope. We have hope in it. Um, so hopefully this team can just get it together. It feels like mentally something happening with the team, within the squad, within the manager, within the players. It feels like the vibe isn't just right right now. Um, you know, the fact that we're on a five-game winning run, I think we were winning like six, seven in a row. And then the international break happened. It killed our momentum. Players were tired from international break. Um, you saw that in even Pulisic's performance today. Like, he was terrible. But that guy looked lethargic. He looked tired. He didn't look up for it, you know. It's the same with Mason Mount, but there's no excuses for him. The whole team was horrible. Player rings will be out tomorrow. At 12, uh, not tonight, but that's all you're going to get from the review. Well done to Real Madrid. Tactically outclassed. Um, Modric was brilliant. Cruz was brilliant. Casemiro brilliant. The defence, Eddie Militao, and, uh, who missed the second leg because he got a yellow card and he got injured anyway. Alaba, brilliant. Courtois, showing why he's the best goalkeeper in the world, as much as I hate to say it. Um, brilliant from Mendy. Benzema, hat-trick. Vinicius Jr. is clearly now developing and turning into a real superstar that I think Brazilian fans and Real Madrid fans hoped he would be. And uh, Ancelotti, world-class manager, bro, that's been willing to adapt to the game, adapt his tactics, adapt his philosophy, because he's been in the game for a long time. Classic Carlo. But, uh, yeah, that's it, man. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell me your thoughts down below on the game, um, and I'll talk about these players deep in the player rating studio which you'll see tomorrow so congrats to Real Madrid they're probably through to the semi-finals and will probably face uh, Man City so yeah see you lot whenever I see you lot